welcome back to day three of the first round of the 15th International Tchaikovsky Competition. For those of you just joining us, my name is Sasha. My wonderful colleague Olga and I are delighted to be bringing you the first two rounds of the competition from the small hall of the Tchaikovsky Conservatory in Moscow. In t this evening's Gazette, we have a very special guest, Leonidas Kavakos, joining us from, from the jury. Leonidas really needs no introduction, but for those of you who don't know, he's one of the foremost violinists of his generation. In my personal opinion, a virtuoso who has redefined the expectations for violinists worldwide in terms of what is actually possible to execute on the instrument. We're really glad to have him with us. Добрый вечер и добро пожаловать на 15-й международный конкурс имени Петра Ильича Чайковского. Мы в Малом Зале, консерватории, и у нас настоящий праздник. У нас очень специальный гость. Это член жюри конкурса по специальности скрипка Леонидас Кавакас. Для тех, кто не знает, это великий скрипач, великий виртуоз, победитель конкурсов Сибелиуса и Паганини. И мы счастливы пригласить его к нам в студию. Леонидас, please welcome, join us here for a nice cozy conversation and thank, uh, thank you very much that you found time and you joined us and my first question is how are you feeling so far what are your first impressions well um, we are well into the um, first round now we're practically over the middle of it and uh, um, I'm glad level is quite high um, and uh, we have heard some quite interesting people that have wonderful, I think, possibilities. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's quite exciting to hear the one after the other and see what is really different and what defines each player um, and what each player actually is bringing um, with his appearance on stage, how they appear on stage, how they conceive all this process of playing in front of audience. Yeah. On that subject, um it seems, to, it seems to me, at least, my impression of this competition is that individual characters, individual artistic personalities are really shining through quite a bit. I mean, as you say, from one to the next, one, one hears a, quite a bit of variety, huge differences in, in interpretive styles. Traditionally, it's my understanding that competitions have often been quite restrictive in terms of what contestants feel they are allowed to bring to the table, interpretatively speaking. Do you feel that that's... That my impression is justified here that people are more free, or is is this universal? Well, look, um, the, I mean, this what you say is right. It has been like this, um, but I feel that when there was, even if you go back many years to the old times of competitions, when there was somebody who had something really special to say, you cannot hide this. Mm -hmm. This will just be there and uh, will will shine. That's as simple as that. And you can say, okay, maybe they would do, or they would risk a little more if they were into just a performance mm -hmm. than into in front of a jury and competition and so on. But still, it's, it's, I think it's always obvious if someone has, is bringing something really special that this is just gonna be immediately, strongly present. Mm. Извините, sorry to interrupt, я хотела бы перевести. Первый вопрос, как Леонидосу нравится конкурс, какие первые впечатления, и все в порядке, очень, Леонидос рад, что очень высокий уровень на, на нашем конкурсе. Саша поинтересовался, насколько есть процент свободы, и нам кажется, что исполнители э, позволяют себе чувствовать, они чувствуют себя достаточно уверенно, и иногда даже выходят за, за некоторые рамки исполнительского, может, даже консерватизма. И Леонида заметил, что яркая индивидуальность, ее, в принципе, нельзя спрятать ни в какие рамки. Если человек действительно талантлив, это сразу слышно. Он, может быть, будет брать больше или меньше риска, но мы, безусловно, заметим эту индивидуальность. In terms of uh, Paganini Caprice or having to play the Chacon or the Fugue, um, what choices would you make and, and why? Well, um, the one Caprice that we haven't heard yet, and I don't think anyone is playing so far, and I'm actually sorry about that. This is number four, mm. which is, I think, his most, um, let's say, the greatest music for Paganini mm. in the Caprices and an extremely difficult caprice. Mm. And um, 
Um, that's a pity, but I can also, of course, understand that this is something that, that you know, um, it's already hard to come and play 50 minutes without break mm. and so many different varied styles. Mm. Um, but um, I, I don't remember, I, when, I was, when I did the competitions, I definitely, of course, 24 was always... Uh, um, Compulsory. It had to be. And then um, I think I played number 11. Um, Definitely, I played number 11 in Sibelius competition, um, but I don't remember what I did later on. But um, number four for me is the one that I'm missing here. Yeah, okay, and um, it's a caprice where you can really show um, sound, understanding of, of, of a polyphony, and incredible um, uh, challenge for, for left and right hand, but especially for left hand. Because yeah. the 24th caprice more or less has quite a few different um, uh, techniques, and that's probably, of course, why it is always yeah. asked to be played in every competition. Sure. Uh, uh, Sasha поинтересовался, если бы Леонидас был участником, какой бы каприз он выбрал, и Леонидас в этот высказался, что ему не хватает каприза номер четыре. Сам он играл каприз номер одиннадцать на конкурсе, но он подчеркнул, что каприз номер четыре он обладает определенным звуком, там скрипач может показать очень яркий и богатый звук. И, к сожалению, ни один из, из участников в этом году этот каприз не играет. Um, speaking about, I mean, there, there are no easy uh, Paganini caprices, of course, but there are some that are considered a little, little bit more straightforward, um, such as, for example, 14 or 16, um, that don't seem to be played much in competitions, if at all. Is there, in your experience, some kind of unwritten rule that one should avoid the caprices that are considered easier? Well, I imagine that, I don't think that exists, but I imagine this is in the mind of all of the contestants. When you know that somebody else is going to come right after or before you mm. and play a caprice that is harder, of course, that will be appreciated in a different way, sure. clearly, also. But um, having said that, um, in the end, really, it's important also how one plays and not what one plays. Yeah, exactly. Саша поинтересовался, есть ли неписанное правило, что более легкие, простые капризы на конкурсе лучше не играть. И, в принципе, сложно ответить на этот вопрос, потому что самое главное не то, что ты играешь, а то, как ты играешь. Well, my question is about the repetitive compulsory pieces that we have here. We had a bet. Uh, we didn't know how much fugues and how much chacons. I lost. <laughs> and apparently 23 chacons and only mm -hmm. two fugues. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to have this chocolate, but I lost it. Never mind. It's a personal <laughs> matter. I will, I'll be I'll over it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. So um, my question is, how are you feeling about listening to chacon 23 times? And then... Uh, Val scherzo. Val scherzo and, and la minor, uh, the A minor caprice 25 times. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. When, yes. when I was doing the Sibelius competition in Finland, mm. that was in 85, I was 18 years old, and then my father came with me to support me through the competition. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, in the first round, there was 60 people playing, 6-0. Six wow. wow. It's an enormous number. Huh. What happened was that by the end of the first round, my father could count in perfect finish from 1 to 24, <laughs> because he had heard so many times that <laughs> Caprice announced, you know, of course, 24th was played, mm -hmm. but he had heard so many times every other Caprice announced that, that uh, he, he just uh, learned how to count and finish. <laughs> so in a way, you know, it is, I mean, it has a good and a bad side in the sense that, of course, when you hear an interesting interpretation, it stands out. It stands out and you don't want it to finish because you're also interested as a listener. But if it's not, then it's a problem. So do you speak Russian now? Can you count or <laughs> is it still <laughs> only the third day? <laughs> well, yeah, we have, uh, well, you know, we have only 25. Imagine 60 is like a yeah. more than double than that. Oh, yes, it must be hard. So, yeah. um, but it is, it is, you know, it, it, it is inevitable in a competition. I mean, something has to be standard for everybody. And, uh, and uh, I have to say that I am, I would expect that... Uh, uh, as choice of repertoire in competition, there would be harder pieces. Mm. I, I think that it is important, of course, to show the musicality. But when you arrive with a piece that is great 
as a chamber music sonata, let's say a great sonata or something like this, which is great. Um, it's a huge risk. Yeah. It's a huge risk because there comes really the interpretation. Hard pieces such as? For example, the Debussy we heard today. No, no, I'm talking about like virtuosity, uh, uh, harder pieces, you know, like I didn't hear any Vieniavsky, for instance, so yeah. far. Oh, it's, so it's coming. It's coming in the second round, but right. not much. Mm -hmm. There is um, one person playing Vieniavsky tonight as well. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but there is... There are other difficult pieces. Ernst, we didn't hear. There yes. is some coming in the second round. So I you saw. think we, we should make Vinyavsky and Ernst as a compulsory? No, no, no. I'm just not saying this. I'm just saying that it is... It is I would imagine that um, it would be a better choice for a competition to have pieces like this. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is... We only heard so far one is Aisonata, Sonata, for instance. Mm. Um, maybe there is more in the second round. But what is important is that Okay, we, I understand if somebody wants to bring a piece of chamber music, but then it has to be really outstanding. Because then you get into another level of, and also for the jury, it's, then you have, because we all played this music. So it's, it's a big challenge, it's a huge challenge another way, and we have that challenge. But we don't have the other one that I described that I would have loved That's to see a little more. That's a point. If you don't mind, I will translate. Um, Leonidas укажется, что... Можно было бы даже усложнить жизнь наших участников и добавить в определенном и добавить в обязательную программу такие сложные произведения, как этюды Эрнста и сонаты Изаи, потому что это покажет не только определенный технический уровень, но также во многом и серьезный музыкальный уровень наших участников. We are very grateful that you came and you found time and uh... We, we hope you enjoy the rest of the day and, of course. and the first round tomorrow. And uh, please do not forget about the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Great. Great pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you.